What's going on guys? Just gonna walk through a bit of a video we recorded out on site and it's just a walkthrough of how we locate water pipes and some of the issues you might face and how to overcome them when tracing a utility line. So I'm just gonna play this video side by side and um, walk you through some of the things we went through and a bit more of an explainer while I'm going through this video. So we've got this guy here, he's, um, he's about to set up the transmitter and the receiver to do some electromagnetic locating. He's gonna hook onto the water meter. He's a pretty good locator, this guy. He thinks he is anyway, so let's, let's look at the footage and um, I'll just commentate as we go. This, one, this one's ideal because there's no fence. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're putting the earth stake in the ground, you want to know roughly where you think the pipe's going. And generally the pipes are going uh, 90 degrees to the water main straight out from the meter. So we're on 8 kilohertz um, and it's got 14 milliamps. That's where I'm assuming it's going so far. I've set my transmitter and the earth stake just offset to that, uh, 90 degrees to the side. Um, limit the amount of interference we uh, might get. Sweep, 360 sweep. So right now we're just performing a bit of an arc sweep um, or 360 sweep. We're just going around the, the connection point and looking for any peak signals that pop up. A slight signal there in the driveway which is weird. Alright, we're... <laughs> We're recording video, so it's not going to plan right now. I'm just going to extend my arc a bit further out this way now. When in doubt, try again. Typical, it's a rubbish, it's a rubbish signal. <laughs> we are struggling. Come back there. We'll go back, start again. All right, here we go, we've found something. And as you come back, it just takes one or two scans and it all makes sense in the end. I don't know what this is, but um, when I did my arc sweep, I couldn't really get much. So I'm just gonna track it back and come back to the connection point. So now we've, we've pinpointed a, a peak signal I'm going to trace it back it to work out what's actually happening. All right, so now just dotting it, dotting it, and um, around about here we go. Okay, I think we know what's going on. The water meter's been moved. I assumed that this pipe would come 90 degrees out to the road, mm -hmm. but it looks like at the other house, they had, a, they had a meter in the middle of the property and maybe got hit by a car. So they've now moved it and relocated it um, away from the traffic where the cars come in. Yes, not a bad realization by that guy. So pick up the bag, transmitter and leads. And we're just gonna move our connection point. Um, again, 90 degrees to where we now know it is. So I wanna place it in the driveway in case someone comes home and drives. <laughs> Over the bag. Make sure no one runs over the gear. So, I'm not too worried about my earth placement now because I'm like that piece. It got ran over. Fairly confident it goes that way. Again, check my transmitter. Uh, we have 20 milliamps on 8 kilohertz. Always double check the transmitter. You don't want to be taking off and you're on the wrong frequency or the earth is no good. Be mindful of the transmitter. So again, we started out doing our arc sweep. We've confirmed that's the same pipe we've picked up before. Okay, getting 18 milliamps there, which is really good. Uh, 30, oh, 30, 300 mil deep. Doing our checks again. 18.3 milliamps. Peak and null. 
making sure yeah. people know align the, the electromagnetic fields and um, getting that confirmation that the signal is milliamps, about where we think it is. Mm -hmm. So, good morning. How are you going? All good, we're just checking the flights under the ground there. Just having a chat to the homeowner there. Uh, another sign is there's a bit of a, a dip in the asphalt there, which is a sign that the pipe hasn't been backfilled properly mm. and the ground is now collapsing. And all there's once upon a time there's a leak there and the, the water's washed away all the road base. And now you get it's a, it's a very common sign that when you see a shallow pipe or a water pipe, if there's a depression like that, something's gone wrong. Mm. Potentially a bit of erosion there in the in the past, and um, it's washed away, washed away part of the road, and there's a, now a sink up, a depression in the ground. Always look left and right when on the road. So it's really strong milliamps, mm -hmm. which is great. All right, we're coming up to the T of the water main. Right, now we're coming up to that T intersection, or where the, where the pipes intersect, the house service intersects with the water main. So just dotting it up, leading up to the T. So we had 19 there, now we've got 10. We are coming close to the Telstra, but we're coming close to the T. So when we have 19 milliamps here, the signal is being spread even, or spread whichever one has a stronger return path for the ground, the signal is going to go either direction. So you might get 9 milliamps here and, and 10 milliamps this way. So we know that's the line. So we've done a walkthrough on this site before, check the water meter and site features and uh, water mains and we have identified where the hydrant is. Uh, eight milliamps here, so we've sort of split seven, seven, eight, seven or eight, and we've got another eight milliamps here, seven or eight milliamps. Not something that you really need to know about right here, about the milliamps and the, the split when, it, when you hit a junction pipe or a, or a T, but it's just good to know um, when you're troubleshooting out in the field what might happen and and how you can overcome that. So it's a pretty, pretty even split, 16 milliamps. Once we get to the T, mm -hmm. it's drawing our current both ways, eight milliamps, eight milliamps. Um, and just to confirm, there's still a quality level C when we get to this water main for this, um, but we'll go to the hydrant. Um, which house were we on? Nine. Next one. Relevant. All right, this is where I'm a bit lost. There, it's actually just right there, right in that frame, that's where the hydrant is. Okay. Not important for what we're doing right now, but if you're gonna hook onto the hydrant. Pretty much checked it on peak and null at the same time. You need but, to know where it is. Um, when you're going along, this is on this is on peak. And then we're just uh, very close. Just checking peak and null uh, alignment there. Is, Very close, so bigger nulls, not really, I don't know what to say, not really a factor. When I say not a factor, I mean it, you, you, it's important, it's just not an issue here with the peak and, so peak and null not being aligned at this point. Just null, <laughs> just peak, mm. 15 milliamps. Right, cool. Double checking peak, double checking the null and the, the milliamp readings to see if there's any drop offs or any bleed signals occurring. Pretty quiet street this one actually, this is the first car in the first 10 minutes of, of recording so yeah very low risk here. Just 
just for this demonstration. Mm -hmm. 700. I'm not going to do the descriptions on this one. We've dotted out the pipe on the way to the water main and now coming back, we've checked our peak and now we've confirmed that's the line and we're happy that it's a round signal. It confirms from start to finish. Um, we can come back and start identifying the line with depth and quality level location. Just one sec. It sort of it, it puts it on a 45 degree bend. Yeah. We know the water pipes aren't going to be 45. They're usually 90 degree bends. But right here, just confirming the the different tools and the the features on our receiver that we're looking at on the display. You got the peak, the null, the depth, the milliamps, and also the compass. And when the compass is changing or any of our signs and readings are changing, that's when we can we can determine what's happening out on site and and troubleshoot that from there. Now, uh, this isn't a full markup because I'll usually mark up the center of the road with descriptions, but I'll just show you how I line it up between two points. All right, let's test this guy's out. His spray painting is he's average sometimes. Here's a guide and I'm pointing it to the next line, the next, the next uh, dot. And um, I'll sort of go straight. <laughs> I'm looking for the previous dot as well. And uh, I'm just trying to line those up as best as possible. So, uh, close to the ground, a light finger. It doesn't have to be too thick, just light and just, just get that line. This quote came from an old friend of mine who knew a thing or two about locating. And it goes, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future or the utility pipe that you're tracing. And that was Steve Jobs, the famous Apple CEO and founder. So that's a quick video on um, how to locate the water pipe. It didn't go as I thought it would to plan. I thought it was going straight out 90 degrees, but when we do our checks, and that's why we do our checks, we do our triple checks, move the transmitter, and if we have to, we come back and trace it back. You just can't assume that a pipe is going to go where you think it is. You need to let, you need to do the work because the problem with assumptions is that we believe that they're the truth. We could swear they're real until we find otherwise. All right guys, I hope you found that video informative. And if you did, leave in the comments below what you took away from that.